Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining our webinar on what is new in Winchell 12.0. So let's look at the um, agenda for today. Um, so the objective is to review and demonstrate what is new in Winchell. So um, explain through slides what's new and um, also show you in Winchell some of the things that are that are new in Winchell. Go through the um, introductions, introduction um, about boundary systems and myself, and then go through topic overviews. So a lot of the new stuff that I've picked up um, and included in this uh, webinar is um, stuff that I think most of the current Winchell users actually use. And this is information that will be beneficial to them in, in terms of moving over to, um, to Winchell 12. Um, then we'll do a quick demonstration and right at the end, we will then take those um, questions. Right, the quick introduction about myself. My name is Ifram Boyen. I am a PLM specialist at Boundary Systems. I have been with Boundary for 18 months now. And um, I have in overall six, uh, just over six years experience on PDC products, specifically Winchell. So everything from um, Pro Intralink, um, Winchell PDM link, Winchell uh, project link, um, some of the Winchell quality modules, some of um, our customers' users, MPM link, um, some service lifecycle management software that actually assist in writing the service, uh, service manuals um, and managing that information. Um, I am also a certified um, impl Winchell implementer and trainer. A bit about boundary systems. Um, we regard ourselves as the technology leaders um, with PDC being our main partner. Um, I'll go through a list of um, other partners that we work with. And we, Boundary System is also the number 16 fastest growing company in the greater Cleveland area. We are also part of the PDS Vision Group. So you look, uh, if you look at the, the map here, you'll actually see we cover most of the, um, the time zones um, in terms of our PDS Vision companies um, those are, that are scattered all over the, the world. So we basically provide support. And um, this are a list of the capabilities that we offer. So we offer product lifecycle management, and data management, and this is basically delivered through the Winchell PLM system. We also do some CAD designs and consulting for some of our customers, simulations, and we also assist in product development, um, just to make sure that our new customers or existing customers meet their deadlines and, and, and so on. A bit more about boundary systems. Um, we have won a couple of industry awards. Um, we are also accredited by PDC as their platinum partner, uh, their certified Winchell implementer. Um, we also agreed as their preferred service providers. And authorized and certified in training all, all CRIO modules, Winchill, MathCAD, and our text. So our text is um, one of the text tool um, that they use to author your service manuals um, and, and so on. Right, so as I've said, PDC is our main partner. We also partner with other companies listed here, like ETRage, ITI, ZWCAD. So ZWCAD um, is also a tool that works more or less like um, AutoCAD. Keythought. Um, yeah, so this is a list of the customers that we work with to make sure that we deliver a comprehensive 
solution um, to our customers. So with that, first of all, um, the compatibility of Windshield 12 with Creo. So you can be back on Creo 4, as long as it's M30 or higher uh, in terms of date code. And then um, with Creo 7, it basically supports Creo starting from 7.0. When, uh, 1.0. So with the initial release of um, Creo 7, there was a couple of issues that uh, affected the integration with Winchell that PDC had to sort out, um, but that is now sorted out in this, um, in this particular version. So yeah, from this particular version on, you should be able to use it with Winchell 12.4. All right. And uh, so some interesting information about the, the support itself. So you will see uh, the latest version of Winchell 12 here would be supported up until 20, uh, mid-2024 with extended support with patches and CPSS to 2025. And um, I mean, you can look at this to see what sort of current version you have and uh, up until when is it supported. But mostly, probably be until um, uh, January 2020 um, roundabout. All right, so some performance improvements um, that PDC did or perceived performance improvements. So a lot of customers have been talking to PDC and us with regard to issues we have saved into the workspace. So, so the more items you have in the workspace, that impacts in the time it takes to save. So if you take a simple part and just make a hole in it and, and save that part into the workspace, if your workspace has about 10,000 files in it, um, Winchell still does a comparison with what is in the workspace and what is in the common space to check if there's any changes uh, in the common space. And then it goes through all those uh, parts to, to actually do that. And, and what you find happens is in that process, you see going through the checks and comparisons, it basically um, locks out your care applications um, user interface. And so at that stage, you can't really do anything in CAD. And you basically have to wait for this whole process to finish and let um, Winchell unlock your CAD UI and you can start working. Uh, I mean, the, the issue with the problem with that is you'll find that the change was made to just one part. And that part has got nothing to do with all the other items in, in the workspace. But because you're saving it into the workspace, it basically just goes through that um, comparison process, which then takes uh, that lot of time. So with Winchell 12, what is nice, what I think is the biggest improvement, so, so the time it takes to do the comparison here, yeah, it is still the same, the, the overall time. It's still the same. However, once the item has been saved into the workspace, once you hit save and the item it, it saves, it's saved, it basically releases the CAD UI or the CAD interface lock. So once you hit save, it takes about a few seconds, and then you're able to continue working in, um, working in Creo Parametric working on the model, opening other models and so on. And in the background, it would be doing the rest of the comparisons um, at that stage. The only thing you will not be able to do specifically with Creo Parametric at this stage, um, at this stage is you won't be able to close down the application itself. So if you wanna shut down Creo completely, you will not be able to do that. It will give you a warning message to say there is background processes that is uh, going on. And the reason for that is because Creo Parametrics Workgroup Manager is bundled into Creo Parametrics. So the Workgroup Manager for Winchell actually runs within the embedded browser. Um, and until it, finish, if it finishes with this process, um, you won't be able to, to shut it down. But if you look at the other programs like SolidWorks, which uses a 
Workgroup Manager, which is basically a standalone tool that integrates SolidWorks with Winchell. With, in that case, once you've saved with SolidWorks, you will then be able to close down the application, even if this process is still carrying on. The only thing you won't be able to close would be the Workgroup Manager itself. But yeah, I think for me, um, from support support point of view, I think this is the um, the biggest uh, improvement in, in in terms of the workspace. Right, then some general um, PLM slash uh, PDM improvements. So first thing, uh, let's just wait for it to load. First thing I wanted to highlight um, is a little bit about augmented reality or AR, as it is popular known. Um, so for those that do not know AR, this is a tool that um, can be used by the sales and marketing team to actually share or show product details information to, to, customer, to customers without showing them the actual CAD model or without having to print a drawing for them to take to the um, customer meeting to actually show the drawing. Um, so what happens is an AR design or experience can be published directly from Winchell user interface. So everyone who's got access to data can actually publish this um, AR directly from Winchell. And then the AR experience will then um, generate a code that can be shared with sales or marketing or any other uh, people that you need to share them with. Then there's an application called the Victoria View that you can install on your gadgets. And they basically, or you'll basically use uh, that gadgets to scan the QR code um, from that AR experience and be able to interact with the actual 3D model in an AR environment. So they can basically take this tab, uh, this gadget, gadget over to the customer meeting and scan the QR code show them the actual 3D model, zoom in, zoom out, rotate, and so on, and actually show the customer the, the, the actual product that we, we're building. Right, and in terms of the improvement, so with the previous versions of um, um, Winchell, and Winchell server, if Winchell server was not connected to, to the internet, you were not able to publish or share this experience. So it, it, it uh, totally relied on the Winchell server itself having access to internet. But with this new improvement now, um, it uses the client's browser to publish this AR design um, to the, to the client, uh, cloud portal. So if the Winchell server doesn't have internet, but your end user machine has got internet, you will still be able to publish. So that, that's the new thing that they have um, actually added onto, onto uh, Winchell 12. And the, the other thing was, um, I mean, there is a limit to the size of the file that can be sent out to a um, cloud portal. Uh, the maximum size is about 150 megabytes. So previously, you would um, send the design over to the cloud, even if the design file is actually over 150 megabytes. And you will only get a warning or an error only after you try to publish uh, that AR. So, with Windshield 12 now, um, there is an API that comes down to the Windshield 12 installation, and basically checks the file size before the file can actually go out to, to the cloud um, to be published. And if the size is over 150, straight away um, it will notify you that the size is too big and cannot be sent out to, um, to the cloud. So this is, uh, I mean, AR is quite a nice tool um, if you want to quickly share uh, the data with your, 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 your customers and you don't want to really share the printed drawings or you don't want to send over the, the models to them, you can simply send the, the QR code. All right. Then um, there's allow revise only from change task or change process. Um, so this is a new setting on 12 that forces the revise of an object to be done only through an approved change process. So it limits users to revise any items from the windshield interface. 
Um, so it, it either removes the revise option completely out, um, and in the other instances, it just grays it out so that you can't really use it. I mean, the benefit that I just saw immediately after seeing this is that administrator can enforce the business process or the business behavior. If the change is only done through a formal change process, um, this sort of um, setting here will allow you to actually enforce it and ensure that changes are fully planned. Uh, you don't just revise or anyone just revise um, an item. So it forces it to go through that full, um, that full change process. Right, another thing, um, you could revise a CAD and not revise the WT part. This happens a lot. Um, it, it happens a lot uh, with, with some of our customers. Um, the WT part will still point to the old revision. So it will still have a CAD link to it. Um, and the reason for it linking to that old revision is because it did not know that the CAD was actually revised. Because in the process of revising the CAD, we didn't connect the WT part as part of this. So the, the BOM itself or the, the BOM view, it is not um, it, it is not up to date because it's still referencing all WT part. So the, the, the BOM is not is not aligned. So this particular option here, what it does is um, so the next slide explains it perfectly here. So what it does is, um, so the example here is, we've got this part uh, that's linked to this, uh, that part over here, you, um, you then revise this WT part. And now you put a WT part sitting on B1, right? Without any WT part linked to it. So this CAD part, is in the latest um, revision, uh, but it has not uh, any. It has not. It has not. A, there's no part linked to it. And at the later stage, you'd go and revise the WT part in trying to fix this. Um, that sort of moves. It, it, it does move the WT part revision up. The only problem with that is that latest revision will still be linked to. A, an old iteration uh, or revision of uh, the CAD part. So the you you so you now have this WT part linked to that old uh, uh, CAD part, and you also have this latest WT part linked to um, this latest WT part linked to the old uh, CAD. So the new uh, option of, of move basically takes the link from here. So, so you don't have to, so with, with the current versions, what you have to do or the previous versions, what you have to do is to break the, the link first, then you reassociate the WT part with CAD, then you will pull the latest one. But with this new um, move option or command, it basically moves this link here from there to the latest item. And this has to be done from the, the workspace itself. So in the workspace, there is an option to um, just move the, the, the WT link over um, the latest item. All right. So the other thing um, we can talk about um, is kind of a collector. So when you go and want to revise or save as, save as objects, we want to collect related items as well. So if we're revising a CAD, we want to collect a drawing, we want to collect a WT part um, that is related to, to this CAD. Um, so that is why we have this collectors over here at the top. Um, that's why we have this collectors here. So that we, basically the collector says, here is the list of the things that relates to these items, be it CAD, parts and family tables, um, documents as well. So at that stage, you're able to collect them and revise them at the same time. 
but this can sometimes confuse um, some of the new Wing users or the infrequent users of Wing Chun. Um, so one of the things we can do in Wing Chun 12 is to customize this tool by here so that, um, I mean, we basically turn off some of the tools that we do not use at all, turn them off, um, that sort of makes uh, this area here less cluttered and a little bit straightforward. So you'll notice that when you get to this um, pane here, um, you also get the customize option on Windows 12. Then you can go and switch on and off the items that you, you basically use. I know, I mean, most of our customers that use us uh, the related objects, when they do revise, the only items that they work with is basically um, the WT part, the drawing, as well as the CAD. In some cases, um, there's customers that also use documents, um, they also pull those in as part of the, the revision. But I find this to be very cool because most of the time, users don't know what some of the um, toolbar at the top here actually, actually, actually do. And when you're looking for something, you basically have to go through most of this to simply find that. And so this will help in sort of cleaning that up and making sure that you only see um, toolbars that you work with. So I think that's also one of the, the nice improvements. Um, so it is the case on here as well. So a lot of people don't use those collectors um, over there, toolbar connectors over there. So you can just basically from customize, turn those off. Right, let's talk a bit about data management. So first thing is, Pro Interlink is not gonna be shipped anymore with Windshield 12. So all Interlink um, customers have been notified by PDC. I think sometime in March, April last year, um, they were notified about this, um, that Interlink has been discontinued. So our advice to our Interlink customers um, would be to start uh, moving over to, to Windshield. So just to quickly explain the process of upgrading or moving to Winchell. So the way the update or the upgrade works is you will need to move from Intralink version that you are currently on to Winchell of the same version. So if you've got Intralink 10.0, you'll first have to move to Winchell 10.0. Then from there, uh, upgrade to Winchell 11, then upgrade to Winchell 12. So that is how, that, that's how that, that works. Um, so that's how the, the, the pro interlink to Winchell uh, works. So my advice would be um, for those customers to start uh, preparing um, for, for that move. Right, so we have some of the um, workgroup manager updates for those that uses um, upgrade and um, workgroup manager. So it gets five clear schematics and kits here for Winchell 12 um, integration has not been updated. So Winchell is still in uh, talks with the um, third parties. And um, I mean, as soon as this is sorted out, or um, when they have that update, they will then release. A, a, a CPS update for Winchell 12 that uh, or Winchell um, workgroup manager update that actually integrates with the latest versions of, of those. And uh, also PDC has dropped support on um, these versions vendors. So, so it works 2017-18, AutoCAD and Inventor 2018, Next 11 and 12, uh, Medcat Prime, 15, uh, not get prime five. So previously have dropped support for Windshield 12 just on these versions. They still support the latest versions like Sonic Wax 19 2021 and same with Inventor. But with, with these older versions, 
um, they won't be able to, you won't be able to use them with um, Winter 12. So they will no longer be um, used. And the other thing that I find to be very um, also nice with this update is the Chrome browser, the embedded browser in, in, in um, either Creo or Workgroup Manager. That has been updated to version 76 of Chromium browser. Um, I mean, there was a couple of issues with the embedded browser or the group manager itself with the, um, the other versions of um, the sort of older versions of um, Chromium um, or Chrome. So PDC have brought in that version 76, which has actually solved a lot of um, those issues. And the big one as well for the group manager users is that PDC have now removed the JavaScript startup files that Workgroup Manager will read before it actually starts. Um, so the way it used to work is it will read this uh, JavaScript first for all the information, uh, for, for all the information and settings, and then it will then move over to the actual EXE um, that starts up uh, the uh, Workgroup Manager. So PDC have done away with those um, JavaScript files and uh, Workgroup Manager will open directly uh, through an EXE file. The nice thing with that, or that I can already see from that is the, the performance. It will be quicker for Workgroup Manager to, to open up because it doesn't have to go through this JavaScript and go through each line reading um, through that JavaScript file. Right. Yeah, then the, the other, um, a group manager update is the implicit workflow refresh, even when Winchill action fails. So with the older versions of Winchill, when you say check in a part that already exists in the system, Winchill will fail to say, okay, this part already exists. And the workspace itself will still show that file as a new file. Um, even if it failed to check in. So it's literally just a new file. With this new um, change that they've made now with the work, automatic work, workspace refresh on action fail. Um, so we can basically update the workspace to show that this is an item that already exists. And I mean, based on this information here, you can decide to either check this out and check it in with the new changes from this new file. Uh, um, yeah, just remove it. So it basically shows you this, which helps in terms of clarity because you'd be wondering why I still have a new file in the workspace, whereas it, it actually failed to, to update. And that's also a big, a big one there. Then some general updates. So from the admin, um, standpoint, Winchill is now certified to run on both, um, both Oracle Java 11, as well as the um, that Amazon Open JDK um, environment. So yeah, that is also good news. So you've got those two options um, there. And Winchill Server 2012 is no longer supported with Winchill 12. So you will not be able to install Winchell 12 on uh, Winchell 12 on uh, Windows Server 2012. For those that run Winchell on uh, Red Hat environment, Linux environment, Unix environment, so Red Hat 6 um, is also no longer supported. Okay. And when we come to the database, SQL 2014, it is no longer supported. So this simply means we will only support SQL Server 2016, 2017, and 2019. So then, uh, 2019 has been added on 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 uh, on Twitter 12. Um, as I've mentioned, that pro interlinked um, has been discontinued. So please, those that are still on there, um, arrange to move to Winchell. All right. So then the other thing is. Cognos Winchell will uh, PDC will be discontinuing the support for Cognos um, reporting service, 
and they basically replace in that way of the Jasper report. So Jasper report has been around, but they have sort of um, updated it a bit. Um, so it's sort of a new technology now. And the nice thing about it is it's an open source as well. Java um, supported open source um, sort of environment, and a lot of developers are starting to use it because it's actually easy to use, easy to maintain. And the other thing is it can also be installed in on the same server as, as Winkle. So if we've got customers that are using Cognos report, um, there is tools that PDC have made available uh, that helps with cleaning those reports and basically migrating them to, to Jasper reports. And if you're thinking of starting with Cognos reports, please uh, don't do it. Um, rather start with the Jasper reports, start working with Jasper reports. Um, I haven't, I haven't uh, done much research on Jasper reports, uh, but from what I've seen, it's, it's, a, it's a very nice of reporting. Um, it gives you that rich HTML reporting, um, which is way better than Cognos if you compare um, compare the two reports. Yeah, so that's the the other thing that's also um, been changed to twelve in twelve. Right. Lastly. Office 365 um, online integration is available, but at this stage, um, it only supports Word and Excel. Um, so this integration just gives you the Winchell toolbars um, from within the uh, Microsoft Office applications itself. So you can check out, check in, create a new um, Winchell document from within your um, external web. Um, but for the installed versions of Microsoft Office, the uh, integrations are still available for download. So you can still integrate your MS Office package with, with Winchell using those available um, uh, integrations. So I will show you um, where to find, to find those for those that are interested in installing this and playing around with it. Right, and then on the WT structure, um, specifically for filters, so you, you'd normally have an edit filter somewhere on this ribbon. Yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to find. You know, if you want to filter your um, structure here to show some configurations that you, you want to show. So what they've done is they've placed this on here. So the latest, the design, in the working so I can change my de design filter to manufacturing um, view for an example if I have a manufacturing view for that particular um, structure so they've then they've made them they have made them available right next to the um, to the search structure here um, just for quick access and use and the other thing that I find to be a big change as well um, actually like what they've done here is you, you I mean if you go and look at your current windshield setup you'll notice that if you go to the objects changes tab yeah there's a couple of tables here so there's a table for deviation and waivers problem report change request change notice so there's like I think four or five tables just listed here so what they've done here is just to have just one table that includes all the object types. So what PDC is trying to do is to sort of sort of clean out the, the interface um, to make it even more user friendly um, and, and so on. So all those attempts have been just linked into one um, table. Um, and this now looks a bit cleaner. Um, this is one of the things that I actually actually like. All right, so now just to show you some of those changes in in Winchell itself. So I've got Winchell open here, logged in as the org admin. So I'm going to quickly go into one of my products here that I've created and go to one of the, the parts here so I can pick on this one. 
look at the structure tab of it and quickly you'll notice that um, those new filter items are now available over there. So I can go and say, um, if, if, if this part or this track had a, a manufacturing view, um, I would go and just change this to manufacturing view of it. And then it will show me that manufacturing view. Um, and I also, if I want to go into the filter itself, I can just click on the latest here. And you'll see it brings up my edit filter that is normally normally over there, not so easy to find. I can go and just filter uh, my view based on the based on the baseline gauge effectivity, the promotion request, and so on. Also, the states. Um, if there's anything that's released, you can also set it to show me only the items that are, that are released. Um, so the next thing is it's now available over there. You don't have to go look for it. Um, on the on the on the edit filter there. It was just available next to the product structure itself. Right. And the other thing is with the, the, the revise on change items. So you'll notice at this stage, this user that's logged in can actually revise this item from here. But now if I log in as a different user. example this user over there looking at this user to that very same part structure click on the uh, actions here you'll notice that there is no revise option for them so what PDC have done is or what you have to do is you simply create a profile and then in that profile there's an option for um, revise on change task that you can turn on and turn off for either a product or a library so in this case, this is a product. So I've turned it off for this user in the product um, context. If I now go to a library, so I've got a part in there. I'm not in the library, same user. If I click on this, I'll go to the details page of it. Actions, you notice that in here I've got a, a revise. So just to quickly show you how to do that is um, quite simple. It's just a profile that you create as an org admin or a site admin. Go to profiles here, and there's one that I created that is called Revise on Change Task. If I go and edit this, I'm just going to bring it this side. So this is the, the profile that I've created. And if I look at the actions here, yeah, you notice there's a couple of actions that you can do for all those contacts there. So I'm just going to look at this one specifically. Revised outside of change task. You will notice that on this profile, it is turned off for um, a product. I can also turn it off for an library as well. And the important thing will be to add a member to this profile. So I've added myself as the member to this profile. That is why when I log in, I couldn't I couldn't revise. So if you want to enforce um, this process to be done properly, um, to be done in a formally manner, um, you can enforce it using using this particular um, setting here. Right. And the uh, now the other thing, if I just go back again to my product. I'm going to look for the cat now. So I'm just going to look for the PCB, the PCB board. So if I go to this assembly here and I go and save it as, save that assembly as, it brings up um, my save as dialog over here. So you'd see there's a lot of, there's a lot of um, file, uh, tools or toolbars. Um, on here, I mean, some of those, a um, lot of users don't know what do they do. Um, so to keep this a bit clean, um, I can go and customize this to say, um, I just want to be able to see just that, that I want to see my cat as well, collect my cat as well, documents. And I can also go and say, for instance, if I'm doing a save as, I'm not going to set a location. So those are the only um 
tools that I use frequently. So I basically keep those on as, 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 as my tools there. So those are the ones that you use. And I mean, even if you set this as an administrator, uh, the nice thing is, is overridable uh, by the users. So a user can go in and say, okay, I also use um, some of these items here. So I also use um, set name, the device. So they can basically go and just change this to meet um, to meet the requirements and make the, the jobs um, quite easy. Uh, because I mean, with, with this, I, I used to find it very difficult, to be honest, to find what I'm looking for or to make sense of um, other toolbars that are on that list. At least there. So I find this to be also very, very useful. Um, keeping with PDC, wanting to keep things quite clean uh, and not cluttered. So this is actually a good thing as well. Um, and this is something that I see a lot of users using when they move over to Windchill 12. Right, the other thing is the AR publish. So the AR that we talked about. So let's say the um, salesperson or the marketing person is, is in the meeting, the customer side, and the customer is interested in looking at the product um, itself, the 3D view of that product. They can quickly ask you to um, quickly generate a um, AR experience for them. And um, just quickly create that AR experience and share it with them so that they can show it to a customer. Um, so maybe that's not a good example, but it's fine. So what you basically do is from the actions drop down, you go and you publish the AR experience. Right. So it will pop up with a sort of a notice um, to basically say the data that you're publishing is going to be posted onto. Uh, the PDC cloud version. Um, just click OK on there, and you can basically give it a name, um, the name for this experience. So this will, this will be the name that will show um, in the experiences where you would basically share them. Um, you can choose how to basically place it, and the quality of this, and then publish it. So at this stage, um, it is publishing that AR experience. And um, just something to mention here. Um, so it will pop up with the login dialog. So that is where you basically put in your PDC um, login details, which is normally your email address and the password that you use to log into PDC site to download software or access um, some of the PDC information. So once that's done, um, it basically gives you a link to a portal. But the other way to access the, the, those ARs would be to go to quick links over here, quick links drop down, and then there's my AR experiences. So that will then be opened in the, in the new page. So this is the one that uh, we have we have open open now, so basically it gives you uh, this options here access. So access simply means if I share this, um, in order to access it, you have to log in with those PDC details. But if I want to just send it to someone who didn't have to log in, I'll set that as public, and I will share an experience. So that QR code is basically shared um, to this marketing person. Then they'll just basically go and scan this code, and this code will show you that module that we have uh, published, and they can, like I said, zoom in, zoom out um, uh, on, on that option. Um, so I can basically send it out, or I can download this QR code as an image and send that picture out to to uh, to to anyone to scan and view this module. So I find that to be very cool in terms of sharing um, that data. Uh, with your um, customers. 
And just last two things to show quickly. Um, or oh, the other one was with the um, the changes table that I mentioned. So if, if I go to this part over here and then go to the changes, you'll notice compared to your current windshield um, version, all the change, this is the change notice, there is a deviation, there is a problem report. We are all bundled into this one um, table. Whereas in the current version, there's a couple of tables and all this will be listed in, in those different tables. And then um, the last thing, um, especially for the windshield administrators, um, at times we find that someone goes on vacation and they still have staff uploaded into the workspace, but not really um, checked in. Um, we know at this stage, I mean, you can go into, um, or as an administrator can go to that part and basically undo checkout. Uh, but in that process, you basically lose whatever changes that were made um, onto, onto those models. What you can do now um, with the other user's workspace table, you can search for all the workspaces that this user have. So it will list them. So they only have one at this stage. And I can go into this um, user workspace over here. I can either remove it from this workspace, I can check it in and do checkout, I can do things like rename. So those are all the commands you can do at this stage if you uh, if you need to just undo checkout and just check in the data from the workspace of one of the users that either left the company or um, they are on vacation. You can, and you can't really afford to use their data. We don't have access to the computer. Because of COVID, everyone is working away from home. So yeah, this is something that the administrator can uh, look at to sort of um, sort out that issue. Yeah, so that is all I wanted to show as far as um, the new initial changes are concerned. Um, just something to mention is, I mean, if you need to learn more about some of their stuff, or if you need deep dive on some of the things that we discussed today, um, I mean, we can arrange that. Um, also, because of COVID-19 restrictions, all our classes are currently um, visual. Um, so as soon as the COVID issues sort of gets better, um, we'll start with our in-center, on-site um, sort of classes um, in terms of that. And for the training schedule, you can visit our website, www.boundarysys.com. So you will be able to find the latest schedule for um, the upcoming trainings over there. All right. And lastly, um, some just some information here. Um, right, so for any technical question, you can email me at epoeng at uh, boundaries.com. Sorry, I didn't sort of change that. Um, it is epoeng, so my uh, first letter of my first name and my last name at boundaries.com. Sales questions or queries, sales at boundaries system, uh, boundaries.com or you can visit our website at boundaries.com uh, or our YouTube channel. Um, it's just called Boundary System. And this is where this video will also be uploaded. All right, just to quickly look at the questions, if there's any. I'm trying to make this a bit just so that I can see your questions. All right. Uh, all right, so the first question from Aaron was he missed 15 minutes of this. Yes, Aaron, this will be uploaded. Um, on our YouTube channel. So you should have access to 
uh, this by tomorrow. So the other question from Lassen. Uh, I just want to get the whole question here. So it says, if the changes are considered into one table, how can you decide between the resulting from change and affected um, affected by change? So the resulting and the affected by change, that is normally on the, on the change, um, on the change task itself. So on the change task itself, um, the resulting changes and affected um, by, those are still um, segregated in there. So if you go to the implementation plan, the change task will still have that. It, it is just on the um, objects changes that all the change objects are just um, in one table. And that, that is just to make it easy to, to or to make the, the interface cleaner in that sense. Yeah, but, but that's still there. I now see the associated type column in the change tab now. Okay, all right. So that's fine. The next question, in Windows 12, for group manager for inventor, can you import image files into the workspace? Is there a plan to add the PDF to the list? Um, I am not sure, Tony. Um, so this is something that I can look at and come back to you. With, 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 a, with an answer there, um, I'm not sure, but we'll definitely find out. Right, so then the next question on the list. Oh, I think that was the last question on the list. If there is no other questions, I see we've actually gone over time um, in terms of the webinar. So if there is no other questions, I would like to thank you for your time um, and have the uh, good rest of the day. Thank you. Bye, everybody. <laughs>